Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this short missive of love to us all, well relatively short, I'm going to talk to you, talk to all of us about our divine relationship or our divine interconnectedness which is the human practical interpretation of the Bene Elohim or God as many sons concept. The most important thing to me about this this idea, this relationship that we have to each other is the way in which we use this relationship day to day. So we all know we are one divine family emanating from a singular source, by which I mean that we are the individualized concepts of God, which is to say that we're all related at our most fundamental. And this plays really neatly into our being each other pushed out or our being each other's reflection. So when we say that we are each other pushed out, what we're saying is that our perception and experience of each other is a direct reflection of our own states of consciousness. So let's say, for example, that you have an experience of being treated well. Well, you're having that experience because that is who you declare yourself to be. You are conscious of being someone who is valued and respected and treated well and so on. And so others have no choice but to confirm that to you. And similarly, if you're treated badly, you are, by the same token, self-declarant of that treatment. And this is a truth that's really worth inspecting and investigating and testing because it holds such a great deal of personal benefit to you, particularly if you're somebody who typically lives your life under siege. I urge you to try this. Privately adjust your opinion of yourself and notice the way that other people treat you. If you're someone who already holds yourself in high esteem, I'm confident that you will bear me out. But if you're someone who thinks that you're always picked on or you're always shunned or whatever it might be, that isn't going well for you. Make that adjustment inside of yourself. Change your opinion of yourself and notice how other people respond to you. And I'll come back to this quality of contact in a moment because you might be wondering what the deal is when you meet someone who leaves you traumatised. Well, the good news is that even the monsters that we meet in life are put in our way for our highest good. Remember, we're never presented with a challenge greater than our capacity to triumph over it. So when we meet with someone who um, looks like they want to take our head off, um, they too are part of this divine plan that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So it's really important that we recognize and understand that we come into contact with each other with different types of people for a divine purpose and it's all to do with us attaining our highest good. So what do I mean when I use the phrase glad to meet you or joyful to meet you? Well I'm referring to the nature of the experience of recognizing another person for who they really are and they, at the same time, recognising you for who you really are. And I apply everything I'm saying to you to myself. So when I meet someone and I recognise them for who they are, and they recognise me for who I am at source, so I'm talking about our substantive reality, then I use the phrase, glad to meet you. I'm not talking about the masks we wear, but a recognition of ourselves as spiritual siblings and members of a divine brotherhood. And please don't be distracted by what you may hear to be uh, gendered language. The word son or brother, um, esoterically speaking or occultically speaking, refers to a way of doing something or a particular emotional temperament, not uh, natal sex. So son in this context is the image of the life giver. In some contexts, Sun refers to the elevated thinker. So it's a nature that we all possess. Beyond our human costuming, we transcend uh, biological sex, but we all possess 
these different emotional temperaments that fall into either male or female category. So don't get distracted if you hear me say son or brother. So back to the joyful or the glad meeting. Um, I think one of the earliest and clearest references in the Bible, certainly in the New Testament, um, is in the book of Luke chapter one, in which John, meaning the grace of God, and Jesus, meaning the pattern of salvation, come together through Elizabeth, meaning the oath of God, and Mary, the formless. And those four elements coming together is a ritual of complete completeness, which is not something that I can describe concisely or particularly straightforwardly here. But I just want to say that this is what happens when we meet another person and we recognise each other for who we are on an emotional level. What's described in Luke chapter one is representative of the importance of every connection you and I make with each other. There is real significance to every exchange, no matter how brief or basal that exchange. Now, this doesn't mean you have to go around analysing every chat in the post office queue. I'm talking about the fact that every time we meet someone, there is something going on beyond what we might uh, perceive on a human level. So our meetings together will do what they're going to do on a spiritual level anyway. Don't worry about that. But I just want you to draw your attention to the fact that when you meet another human being in the course of your day to day life, in the course of you going about your everyday business, there is a real spiritual significance to that. What this does mean is that you have an option to experience your meeting, a, a perfectly normal, natural meeting with another person in a deeper way that leaves you stronger and more attuned to your divinity. If things don't go well, you're free from the pain of wanting the other person to behave differently toward you, and you instead take the decision to make any adjustment that needs to be made within yourself. And you're going to benefit from making these adjustments in ways far beyond just meeting that other person. And I hope that's clear. If you want any further explanation, then do pop a question in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer you um, as quickly as I possibly can. So I'm just going to reiterate that when we meet people um, and we decide to think about that meeting on a spiritual level, we begin to recognise the fact that because this person is us pushed out, because this person is reflecting ourselves back to us, what we have to do is not uh, trouble ourselves to want them to be different and find that we are uh, stressed by that, but we thank them for who they are and we make the adjustment within ourselves. And I'm going to talk about that again in a moment. I mentioned in a comment beneath a recent post on Instagram that our meetings serve three main purposes. And those purposes are confirmation, revelation and initiation in the sense of something beginning. And as I said already or alluded to, all of these things relate to our states of consciousness. So let me give you an example. Let's say you believe yourself to be someone who has the capacity for patience meeting a tedious person or a boring person will enable you to prove that, will confirm that to you, or that meeting will otherwise reveal that you're not in that moment expressing patience. And if that's something that you want to do, you then have the authority to initiate the expression of patience by making an emotional or mental adjustment. So how you do that is you thank the other person and you're doing this mentally while you're experiencing this, oh my goodness, when will this conversation end? You thank them for being your reflection and then you tell your divinity that you are ready to express patience and that you consent to doing so. And that's all that happens. And you can do this under any circumstance with any meeting. So you're just going to be present with yourself, experience whatever emotion comes up from that meeting and notice what that uh, the emotion that's come up is telling you. Does it confirm something you believe to be true? In other words, 
in, in which case, excuse me, that will become stronger in you. Is it revealing that you are not who you thought you were? If that's the case, then you're going to take the next step, which is to say, thank you for revealing this to me. I am ready to express whatever it is, whatever quality or characteristic you want to express and consent and just feel good. And you'll know you, you've consented because you'll get that a tingle above the solar plexus. So remember, none of our experiences, our meetings are accidental or incidental. They are necessarily determined by who we are relative to what God desires to express through us. And so as we make these adjustments I've, I've spoken about, we're being signposted in the right direction. We're becoming greater and greater people through every meeting that we have with another person, as long as we are able to recognize the meeting for what it is. And that's, as I say, a signposting. So what happens then when a meeting is emotionally overwhelming? I mentioned before, when somebody leaves you traumatized or is um, really making you feel very uncomfortable indeed. If you find yourself in a situation like this, this is an unequivocal signal that you are emotionally unstable and you must rectify this as a matter of urgency. The quickest path to emotional instability is not recognizing yourself for the divinity and the nobility that you are. And so the quickest and easiest route back to emotional stability is to remind yourself that you are divine, that you are essential to the plan of God, that you are a you are love at your source, that you are perfect at your source, that you are good and that you are noble. And you can do this by having a conversation with yourself into a mirror or express this in some other way. But as I say, the quickest route back to emotional stability is to recognize that you are love, that you are good, that you are divine, that you are nobility. When we find ourselves facing traumatic experiences, it is a signal that we have moved away from this belief at our core. I remember sharing this with um, a lady I was speaking to a couple of years ago, and she said that she felt really uncomfortable saying these sorts of things to herself because she thought she was being narcissistic. So what I told her then was that these conversations only become, say, third dimensional or narcissistic or whatever you want to call it, if what you are saying about yourself, you're using that to compare yourself to another person. So if you're saying, I am good and Joe Bloggs is, is bad, then you know that you've gone off kilter. When you have these conversations with yourself, reminding you about yourself, about your nobility and so on, what you are doing is acknowledging your best qualities and the statements you're making, you're making those about how God is expressed through you. So that's something I wanted to share, just in case you felt a little bit uneasy about standing in a mirror and praising yourself for, for 15 minutes. It's really important that that conversation you're having in the mirror is a serious conversation in which you actually recognize just how important and wonderful and so on that you are because that is actually the key to your emotional stability. And you'll find that um, traumatizing contacts with other people will dissipate. And if you've had that experience already, please feel free to share that below. Um, or if you have any questions about that, again, um, ask them in the comment section below. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about in this upload. Our meetings are more than just everyday exchanges. And something wonderful that happens as you begin to practice noticing these exchanges on this level and making the internal adjustments is that you'll become much more um, skilled, let's say, at communicating with other people without saying a word to them. What this means is that you're going to be able to go into spaces that perhaps you felt you couldn't access before. You'll never feel uneasy wherever you go because you send the message to your spiritual siblings that this is where you belong and they will receive you with joy. Just have confidence about that. 
don't worry about getting a job, for example. If, if you want the job, speak to your spiritual sibling on an emotional level and the job will be yours if you really want it. And the, the wonderful thing about that sort of thing is that you know within whether or not it's for you. And so if you feel a confirmation that it's for you, just take it because you'll be able to have it. Wherever you go, you'll feel welcome. You will feel loved. You'll feel valued. Valued. You'll feel respected. You don't have to worry about someone disliking you because you've got the wrong pair of shoes on or whatever it might be. I'm being silly, but, you know, you'll never have to worry about um, being uncomfortable in a situation or or not feeling that you belong because you are speaking to the other human being on a spiritual level. And that's the only level that really matters. Remember, the adjustment comes from within. Pain, as I said before, comes from wanting other people to do things differently. But we are not given the authority to interfere with what other people are going through as we reflect. Uh, use each other as the all-important reflection. Our job is to make an adjustment within ourselves. As we make those adjustments, our experiences change. So this is, um, I think, another really useful way. Not I think, I absolutely know that this is a, a really useful way of using and understanding the spiritual language of emotion. If you are smiling, I think there's a song that says when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with smiles with you. That sums it up perfectly. If you are smiling within, you will see smiles on the faces of everyone around you. The more you see others, the more we see each other for who we really are and truly are, the stronger our sixth sight becomes and the easier our life become as well. So thank you very much for listening to this upload. It's been an absolute joy to be with you again on my YouTube channel. And until we are together again, stay phenomenally you.